I'm here today at the 2022 UK Hill Climb National Championships and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you a preview of the course, the very best tech on show today and more gurning faces than you know you ever needed to see. The UK hill climb scene is a uniquely British tradition which sees riders racing in a time trial format on a series of unrelentingly steep climbs ranging anywhere from 3 to 20 minutes. The UK hill climb season runs from early September until late October and the national championships marks the end of this short but utterly intense season and is among the greatest spectacles in cycling. In this special edition episode of Bike Radar's Hill Climb Diaries, we're going to be bringing you all the action from the day. The UK hill climb season holds a very special place in the heart of Bike Radar, and our Hill Climb Diaries videos are among the very best things we have ever made. If you haven't watched these already, I implore you to click that link in the video description or in the card above. You will not regret it. In the meantime, of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel so every time we upload a video like this, you will get a notification and if you have any questions or comments about the hill climb scene, leave those below. We arrived here yesterday at the top of Old Chew Pass with full intentions of riding the course to bring you a preview, which we are going to do, but as we pulled up, who would we spot but reigning UK men's national champion Tom Bell. We sat down with Tom to talk a little bit about this race and please excuse the audio quality, we are not exaggerating, we literally just showed up and caught him outside a bathroom. First and foremost, tell us a little bit about the climb. So we just looked it up, uh, I think it's one, about 1.5 kilometres long. I think my fastest time is somewhere around 550, something like that. It's a relentless, relentless climb, it's uh, steep all the way up um, and it's going to be tough for every single person, I think. Now, you know, you're a man with lots and lots of experience uh, as a coach. In your professional opinion, what is the way to pace tomorrow's climb? Well, I think certainly you could go off too hard. So pretty much like any hill climb, I think you need to kind of meet your effort at the bottom and then just trying to not get kind of mentally destroyed when you cross that castle ring, you look up and it's, you kind of got the steepest section straight after that. And uh, you look up and you can see Kind of everything you've still got left which is quite a lot um, so i think being mentally resilient at that point is going to be important but also just like any hill climb not going off too hard is going to be particularly important on this because it's so steep and it's so relentless that you can't really back off without losing lots of speed well all the best from all of us at bike radar thank you and we look forward to screaming at you all the house tomorrow perfect <laughs> look forward to it <laughs> Now sat at the very bottom of uh, Old Chew Pass. Felix, tell me, or tell the viewers rather, what you can see in front of you. Uh, I mean, talk about psyching the riders out straight away because it is horribly steep straight off the start. My overriding feeling at this minute though is deep, deep, <laughs> just sort of satisfaction and relief knowing that I'm not riding this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> up, 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 up. <sighs> As we said, the climb starts with this pretty unpleasant looking ramp. And if I was to guess, I would say what? 10, 15 percent? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's consistent there. Consistent. For a while. Wet. So you can see there's lots of riders rolling down the hill, uh, doing their sort of reckeys for the route, working out pacing strategies and uh, all looking quite universally anxious. Yeah, not a lot of chat going on. <laughs> One thing riders are going to have to be aware of is the, you know, not veering off onto the sides because there's a lot of leaf litter. Yeah, heading up the central, the crown of the road, also very, very greasy. So we've sort of emerged from the trees now, valleys opening up, beautiful views down to some sort of old mining spoils. I think the, the grit salts are one of the sort of major obvious landmarks of the hill. We're about roughly halfway up the climb and we're coming up to one of the more technical uh, obstacles and indeed an obstacle it is. Let's stop to investigate. Well, we've got ourselves a rather greasy looking. Capital grid. It's looking quite sorry for itself. Um, it's got a grip tape on it, which in theory is going to help, but 
I mean, we're gonna just have to see how the riders cope on the day. What's this about, do you think? I think that's guiding riders around there. <laughs> you see, we've kind of passed that cow grid. We're now out into the open moorland. Another grit stop. So we're nearing the top now. Once you've got this far, I guess it's all in now. What do you reckon, Jack? All in from here? Yeah, I reckon it's kind of easing off a bit towards the top. If riders have got anything left in the tank, good opportunity to give it a good old sprint. Rinse it. <laughs> which I will not be doing. <laughs> Grit stop. <laughs> What's this, 200 meters? Oh yeah, evil little sprint to finish we're on. Basically the flat now, and riders will be able to do, chuck it in the big ring and uh, thousand watts to finish. <laughs> I'm here this morning with Jack Evans, who actually joined the Bike Radar team back in November of last year. He is without doubt one of the better athletes on the Bike Radar team. Now we're at the top of the climb, we don't want to distract Jack too much, he's ready to get warmed up. How are you feeling Jack? Yeah, there's a nice mix of nerves and anticipation. I think the atmosphere is going to be wicked and it's for my first National Hill Climb Championships. I think, yeah, it couldn't, couldn't be much of a better venue, I don't think. And am I right in saying you just haven't ridden this climb thus far? Not at all. Um, haven't, haven't done a recce, so it's the first time up, but had a look on Veloviewer. I'm not sure how much that helps, to be honest, because you just, <laughs> it's just intimidating. There's, <laughs> there's, there's lots of red on there. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a small gear, probably seven and a half, eight minutes of purgatory. Well, we're not going to hold Jack back too, too much, but later on in this video, we're going to take a close look at Jack's bike. Give the viewers a little taste of what's to come with your tasty bike today. So I'm riding my Canyon CF SLX, which is already a very light bike. Um, and the only mod I've made is take off the bottle cages, which shaved a whopping 88 grams off. That's all I've done for it. I haven't been chopping anything off. All the best, Jack, from the whole Bike Radar team. We're going to head down the hill now, catch a bit of the racing action, and I promise, scream our lungs out at you as you roll by. Come on! It's 10.30. 32 now which means Jack is heading off in just a second I'm just below the corridor of people so I'm gonna do my best to rip my lungs out and give him as much support as this guy's getting Whee! I can just see Jack on the horizon I can see his little teal helmet bobbing away come on Jack get on get on come on Jack dig in dig in Okay, Jack, you can barely breathe. How was it? That was one of the hardest climbs I've ever done. It's just the steep to begin with. Dips a little bit going under the cattle, going over the cattle grid, then just gradually ramps up until the end, and then a bit flat. But oh, amazing climb, amazing atmosphere. I'm absolutely ruined. I couldn't see for the last five hundred meters or so. Oh. <laughs> So we've just left Jack and we've headed down the hill, kind of getting stuck into the action, doing our media stuff and uh, watching riders. Woo! Woo! It's fairly early doors yet and there's already a great crowd out. It's, you know, it's gonna be a really fun day. Here comes Tom. Maybe gonna take a win. Yeah. 
So Jack has just finished, we've given him a chance to recover. Jack, you looked the part, but how did you get on? The throat's still stinging, the legs are still stinging, but um, I was quite pleased with that. I um, held about the power I was hoping to. It's about a minute off the fastest so far, uh, before the real fast uh, boys and girls set off this afternoon. So I think for my first National Hill Climbs, that's, that's a good day. Now you're riding your very tasty Canyon Ultimate CFS Likes. Now, I will say Jack did a really good write-up about a recent trip to Switzerland, the Haute Route Davos. You must check that one out. There's a link in the video description. But just briefly, tell us, Jack, how did the bike get on? and were your mods with the bottle cages removed worth it? <laughs> I think time will tell about the bottle cages, but a mod I made before going to Switzerland was uh, putting on an 1132 cassette um, that using a, a longer cage derailleur. And um, although I didn't get quite into the 32 sprocket, it was nice to have just in case, but I tried to keep a slightly lower cadence due to how slippery the climb was, uh, being steep and wet. Power meter pedals, Vero, Asioma duos enabled me to keep a gauge on the effort is really important because the first slope was, was quite hard. I didn't want to sort of average 500 watts for that and then really slow down. So um, all in all, yeah, a great, a, great, a great horse for this course. Well done, Jack, from all at Bike Radar, and we hope to see you in plenty more videos in the future. I'm here with Charlie Openshaw of Team Lifting Gear, and we're going to talk through his very, very tasty Canyon Ultimate CF SLX, which has got a lovely one by build with a really cool SRAM blip setup. First off, Charlie, how did you get on today? How was the climb? How sick do you feel right now? I ran out of gears very quickly, but it was great fun, great crowds, and I clocked an 824. Not bad at all, nothing to be sniffed at. What are we weighing with this very, very feathery looking build? Without pedals, 4.995. That's not a lot, you can't really go much lighter than that on a kind of pretty, relatively speaking, stock bike. One thing that really stands out to me is that carbon one by chain ring. You know, carbon chain ring, quite an extreme mod. Any problems with that this season? No, it's been fine yeah. and it uh, shaves that extra 30 grams off. 30 grams is the difference, could be the difference between winning and losing in hill climbs. <laughs> My final question, just looking at that cockpit, you've got those really nice SRAM blips just set up beneath the, the bars. You know, how, how are they in a kind of race situation? They, they are great. It took a little bit of uh, getting used to putting them in the ideal position, but once I kind of had them set up, taped them up and they're just spot on. Thank you very much, Charlie. We are gonna let you go now. It is completely chucking it down and you look like you need a warm jacket. <laughs> I do, I do, cheers. <laughs> I'm here with Natalie Stevenson of the Glasgow Ivy with a very, very tasty Specialized Athos, which I've just been told weighs in at 6.1 kilos. Before we get stuck into your bike, Natalie, how did you get on today? Um, yeah, it was good. Uh, I always feel like I could do a little bit more when you get to the top, but yeah, really glad just to have a good run and yeah, get to the top and just missed out on sub eight minutes, but yeah, happy with that. Now, disc brakes, pretty rare in the world of hill climbs, but clearly not holding you back in terms of spec with the bike. Do you want to talk us through some of your favorite tech highlights on this bike? Yeah, sure. I've, I've got a mountain bike one by on the front, so that's a, a 32 cog. Um, and uh, I've got some really uh, lightweight wheels that were made by um, Z Wheels. Um, I've got a, a skinny tub on the front, but I changed the tub on the back to give extra grip because the last few hill climbs I've done, especially in the wet, um, end up with some wheel spin. Carbon saddle and then obviously just the smallest lights I could find um, to, to get me up the hill today, so yeah. Now very wet days, you said, I imagine very greasy, particularly at the bottom. Have you kind of tweaked tyre pressures or anything to suit the conditions? Yeah, so we've been trying to get that right over the last few hill climbs because there's been quite a few wet ones. Um, so today we reduced the tyre pressure at the back a little bit, so I was about 75 psi at the back today. Um, still had a couple of spins, but to be fair it worked a lot better than some of the other rides I've done, so it seems to have worked. Thank you very much for talking us through your bike. So cool to see that these days, you know, we are getting like close or below six kilos with disc brake bikes. But let me know what you think of disc brake bikes at Hill Climbs in the comments below. I'm here with Dan Leatherbarrow from Cheltenham County on a bike which is very, very much up my street. Not only is it a fixed gear, but is an eBay parts bin special. Dan, tell us about your bike and how you got on today. Yeah, so um, I'm on my Dolan Sater, which is down at uh, 5.3 kilos. 
Um, and yeah, I managed to get uh, a 650 um, today, so I'm really happy with that. I think that's snuck into the top 50. So the Dolan Sita, it's kind of, you know, designed more as a track bike than anything else. I mean, first off, how did the bike feel? And for those who aren't really familiar, how did it feel climbing on a fixed gear bike on such a tough, tough climb? Yeah, so for most of it, it was actually okay. Um, the start, which I thought was going to be the hard part, was, wasn't too bad. And there was a little kick just before it hit the crowd where I was really groveling. And then to be honest, at the line, I was actually spinning out the gear. So it was a little bit too, too spinny, but for the rest of the climb, it was pretty perfect. And it just feels so nice to accelerate on it. Now there's actually quite a lot going on in this build. I mean, really there's a real hodgepodge of parts, a very charming hodgepodge, <laughs> but you know, talk us through some of the highlights and particularly, let me know about those brake levers because they look quite interesting. Yeah, so the, the brake levers are some uh, universal LR2s, which are some 1980s TT tech. Um, yeah, I managed to pick them up on, on eBay and I think they're down at 120 grams for the pair, so thrilled with that. And then I think the other highlight is the saddle, which is down at uh, 59 grams and was another eBay special for 20 quid, which someone didn't know what they were selling. <laughs> the wheels as well, uh, they were a set of 10 speed tubulars, swapped out the rear hub um, to a fixed gear hub, um, a local builder in Bristol. They're down at, I think, sub a kilo for the, for the wheel set. So yeah, thrilled with that. And then I guess the other highlight is the, the brake, which is a KCNC uh, CB12 or something like that. And that's um, down at, I think, 140 grams for the, the caliper. So super light. <laughs> Now, obviously, you know, it's a proper dedicated hill climb machine, but, you know, no no shade in saying it. It's not like the super crazy high-end bike we're used to seeing. If you had to put a number on it, roughly what do you think you've spent building this dedicated hill climb weapon? Uh, so it's under a grand for the, the entire build, uh, which, yeah, when you've got people here spending that on a, a front wheel, it's quite nice to be placing higher than a lot of them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dan. Really cool bike and hats off from all the bike raider for flying the fixed gear flag. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm here with Joe Blackburn of High North Performance. Joe, how did you get on in today's race? Um, it was pretty good, finished 11, um, so quite happy with that. Um, at least it's over now though. <laughs> tough climb. <laughs> You're absolutely right, very, very tough climb, but I mean, you had pretty much the perfect bike for the occasion. Very nice Cannondale Super 6 High Mod. What everyone wants to know, of course, Joe, what does it weigh? So, uh, with the power pedals and the grippy tyres, it's 4.2 kilograms. So about four without the power pedals. That's not a lot. I mean, how did it feel? How did it feel on the climb? Such a lightweight bike. Uh, it just feels like it just feels like it goes. It's amazing, especially like standing. Um, yeah, it's really quick. Big challenge for everybody today was that super greasy course. You've swapped out for a slightly heavier duty rear tire. What is that tire and did you get any wheel spin today? Um, yeah, so I swapped um, it out for a continental competition. Um, I was running coarser speeds on it, but um, tend to get quite a bit of wheel spin. So no wheel spin, really grippy. So you've got your kind of like perfectly optimized drivetrain, wax drivetrain, really small chainring up front and what, 11, 28 or something. In terms of gearing, were you happy with your choice today? Yep, gearing good. I tend to um, sit more when I'm racing, um, but uh, yeah, be able to spin quite a high cadence. Um, so yeah, good choice of gear. And then finally, those wheels, iconic with the fabric spokes. I mean, how have they fared this season? Any concerns about durability or have they fared absolutely fine? Yeah, they're really good. I mean, I probably needed about 10 miles on the bike in total, so. Um, but yeah, they're really good. Thank you very much, Joe. Well done on your ride today. And thank you so much for letting us look at your bike. Thanks very much. That's the racing all done. Absolutely unreal atmosphere out on the track. Uh, like almost to the point where it was kind of emotional actually seeing these people going as hard as they could. I'm kind of feeling like, oh, I want to, I want to give it a go next year, but you know, <laughs> that that will wane in the next few weeks, and I'll probably never do it. But yeah, just just really excited, really top day out. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree. The racing itself was super close, particularly at the top of the men's field. Loved speaking to all the riders and particularly ogling over tasty, nerdy bike tech. It's why we love it. It's what makes Hill Climb so special. Really, really hope that you enjoyed this special episode of Hill Climb Diaries. 
of course if you've got any questions or comments leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe so every time we upload a video like this you will get a notification and go back and watch the old episodes of Hill Climb Diaries they really are fantastic they're very funny classic classic bike radar videos